Howdy folks, and welcome back to Assassin's Creed Valhalla with the Mighty Vingles. So, we left you on a bit of a cliffhanger in the last episode. We're in the county of Shropshire, trying to negotiate peace with the King of the Britons, when Ivar Ragnarsson, who we really should have known better and not invited along to diplomatic negotiations thanks to the acrimonious history that he has with King Rory of the Britons, decided that the best way to open negotiations was to murder the king's brother right in front of him. Now, bear in mind that this is going to be the concluding part of the earlier video where I talked about how the game ended up doing something that I found absolutely unforgivable. And I'm not talking about Evil's actions. I actually thought they were quite funny. <laughs> and they were certainly unexpected. I mean, I was expecting Evil to do something rash at the peace negotiations, but I wasn't expecting him to go nearly as far as he did. But, well, he did, and now here we are, clearing out the last of the Britain troops in the village of Quatford, before we regroup back in the church and try to figure just exactly what the hell it is we're going to do next. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, that looks, that looks, that looks quite painful. You might want to get that look at that sunshine. It looks like it's going to leave a mark. <laughs> anyway, just a couple of Rory's troops left, although this last one is proven to be a bit of a handful. And once we've uh, dispatched this guy, we'll be able to regroup in the church and the chat. Good God, what carnage! We must let Bishop Dale know that the battle is done. Yes, Chilbert. Let's uh, let's do that. Chilbert's actually come on a long way from when we first met him. I mean, he wasn't exactly soft, but he wasn't much of a fighter either, and he's blossomed quite a bit under Ivar's tutelage. Ivar's really taken a shine to him. I mean, he hasn't changed him in any way that matters. He's still quite compassionate and thoughtful, but he can look after himself in a fight now. Ivar has really taken Chilbert under his wing and hardened up some of his softer edges. But he's still a good kid. You did yourself proud, Adeling. This was not a battle we needed, Ivar. When you are king, Jailbert, you won't need battles. You will crave them. You murdered Rodri's brother, you beast! Our one chance at peace is lost. Peace with Rodri is as likely as you dying a virgin, Bishop. It won't happen. He is too canny, too vile. You know, I'm inclined to agree with Ivar here. Ivar has a point. Rodri showed us nothing but contempt. Peace was not to be written today. You see, Adeling, Eivor understands. There can be no peace with these backward Britons. What's done is done. We must plan our next moves before the Britons regroup. They will retreat to their great castle for certain. It's well nigh impregnable. Then we starve them out. Attack their supplies. Watch them beg for death. Dear God. More death, more war, endless refugees. This is our only way forward, dear love. You know the territory best. How can we hurt them? Well, for food and supplies, they stockpile cargo at Wenlakan outpost. Down south of Quatford. Rodri has another secret supply line. Ask among the refugees near the river, those who have fled from occupied villages. Rodri's Britons will strike back long before we can. Indeed. They will send Anir and his soldiers. They train in Wesbury, west of the ruined tower. You do not need me to hold your hand, Eivor. I will head to Wesbury. Scout around. I know your method of scouting. It always leads to swordplay. I am as regular as Tidewater. I shall go with you, if only to get an honest accounting of our situation. I will meet you both at Westbury, then, once I've done some damage. Until then... One last thing. We'll need a field before our battle's done. Try to free any captives you find. They'll swell our ranks. All right, Bishop. Sounds like a plan. However, we do have a lot of ground to cover here, so I'm going to do all of my bits off camera. Then I'm going to skip ahead to the relevant part where we meet Ivar and Chilbert lying in wait outside the village of Wesbury. 
heard that jailbird? I don't uh, think so. A faint as you are. Jailbird too. The air smells of Eivor, jailbelt. Hey, Eivor. I was telling the Aetherlink here that Thor is with us this day. Our victory is assured. So, what is your plan? That bastard Anir commands this hamlet. So let us show these folks what happens when a village bows to the Britons. Smash it to kindling, burn it to ashes, and cut Anir's tender throat. Right, my boy? I hope to fight well, not cruelly. The cutting of throats I leave to you. I'd like to say I made the following choice because I thought it was genuinely the best thing to do, but really I just suck at stealth. Inir is the Briton's best warrior. If he dies a brutal death, Rodri will think twice about fighting back. Oh, my blood runs hot. Let us rush in now and leave a trail of bloody kindling. A stealthy approach might earn us more time. Bah, I prefer sound and fury. But do as you must. Sound and fury it is, then. Bloody kindling it is. We will smash this place to splinters. Come, Jailbert! The fight is on! Let the Saxon villagers flee, Ivar. Only the Britons deserve our wrath. Thor thunders beside us! Yeah! Shouldn't be seen here. The hood should work. So, the TLDR version. Ooh, oh, there's some loot over there, we're going to have that. But yes, the TLDR version is to burn the village to the ground, but let the Saxon villagers survive, because it's not their fault, they were occupied by the British troops. And also, if you go around killing the Saxon villagers, the game will force you back to an earlier save. As a no, no, don't do that, you can't go around looting, burning and killing, just looting and burning. Well, we're allowed to kill, just, you know, only the British troops not the villagers, because that's not something the Vikings ever did, is it, boys and girls? Um, yeah, I'm not sure what version of history Ubisoft had been reading, but whatever. We'll go with it. So, Bernie, 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 and then lots of shooty, shooty, and stabby, stabby. The remaining British troops, just in case you didn't know where they were, were all highlighted. And Rory's lieutenant, forgotten his name, Yanir? Yeah. All these Welsh names sound the same to me. <laughs> He's also around here somewhere too. And he needs a damn good stabbing as well. Let's take this guy out. I do like the way the shields don't last forever. A couple of blows and they splinter. Because they were just wooden shields. Sometimes covered in canvas or leather and rimmed with iron. Right, where's the boss? Kill Yanir and his men. Probably around here somewhere. Oh, you who? Oh, there he is. So, this is the best man that King Rory has, is it? Well, we're going to see about I love that, uh, <laughs> that arrow ability, by the way. You charge it up, and it just keeps picking targets for you. Until eventually it's picked the maximum number of targets, or you release the fire button, whichever comes first, and then it basically just fills everybody full of shooty sticks. Um, one per target available, or if there are a limited number of targets, then each target gets multiple shooty sticks. It's just the inner left. Uh, I do have one adrenaline point. I could use a special ability on him, but he doesn't really need it. Right. So much for a near. Fearsome Britain, my bunghole. Fearsome Britain, my bunghole. I told you I like Diva. <laughs> Okay. Right, well, that's the bloody path to peace complete. Now we're going to go and regroup with Divar and Chilbert and wait for Bishop Deolif to turn up. Because thanks to our combined efforts, we've got King Rory well and truly on the back foot. And we need to discuss how best to take advantage of that. We caught some eel for a feast. The bishop should be pleased. 
The simple fellow comes now. Ah, a strange way to celebrate victory. But then again, our Christ was a fisher of souls, was he not? Bishop, greetings. We've the makings for a delicious soup. I'm grateful, Chael Bert, but my heart is heavy. So many homes burnt. We'll be years rebuilding. You should have seen Chaelbert fight. He will be an elderman with sack and guts, fearsome and raw. I should rather be fair and just, but I take the compliment. I have sent word to the Britons. I pray King Rodri will again be open to peace, in spite of his brother's murder. It worked in our favor. Look where we landed. Britons begging for mercy like whiny pups. And here's where I get to choose whether or not Ivar will be present for the negotiations. The fighting is done. The talking is not yet begun. We'll need to be careful about who attends our negotiations. Right, I'm pausing it here because this is very important. I went with option three there. Do not let Ivar within a country mile of any peace talks because we don't want a repetition of what happened the last time. Our next steps are critical, my lords. And after what happened in Quatford, it is clear to me that Eva should lay low. Lay low? After all I have done here, you tell me to dunk my head? The good bishop is right, Ivar. You have a warrior's heart, not a peacemaker's. Fuck you, Wolfkist. I know Rodri, and I know the kind of tricks he will pull. That is me warning you. And again, pausing it here, because this is also very important. We've just excluded Eva from the peace talks. And as a result, he's warned us that this is going to come back to bite us in the arse because Rory is a slippery shit and cannot be trusted. If you hear me farting, that is my welcome to the bastard. You bruised his pride, Eivor. If you have some balm for it, by all means, share it. His pride makes him difficult, and his anger makes him hasty. But he is not without honest feeling. I will hunt him a great boar, I think. And together we'll roast it over a fire and tell tales of war. That should please him. Okay, third and final pause. Ivar's pride has been hurt and he's buggered off. Chilbert actually likes Ivar a lot. And so, in order to try to make him feel a bit better about being excluded, he's gone off to hunt him a wild boar. Now, all of this has happened as a direct result of me choosing to exclude Ivar from the peace talks. Okay? Right. Let's see what happens next. Bishop, we must prepare for Rodri's arrival. Rally our men and set up a camp just here. Remember, Ivar has repeatedly warned us that Rory is a slippery shitbag and you cannot trust him further than you could throw him. And he's a big fat slippery shitbag, so you can't throw him very far. The next day the Britons turn up for the peace talks. But King Rory doesn't come in person, so what is Rory doing while he sent his wife to talk for him. Peace or war will be decided, but not yet, not now. We must wait. I loathe waiting. It is all in God's hands. We can but pray and give thanks for this moment of rest. The Britons have come! The moment has ended. This way, by the great oak! Where is Chaelbert? He ought to be present for these talks as our future elderman. He went hunting. For wild boar, he said. That was quite some time ago, no? We cannot wait. We should settle the peace now. Lady Angharad, greetings. We come to speak of peace. We are glad and to hear it. But where is your great king? He stays at the castle at my behest. I feared his presence would inflame the cutthroat Ivar. That does actually seem quite smart, but we're here to make peace with the King of the Britons, not his wife. Rodri is King of the Britons. All promises of peace must come from his mouth. In all things, the King and I act as one. As Lady of the Britons, I have full voice to speak for my husband and our people. Then we accept, honored lady, your full authority. Perhaps then, at long last, we can end this war. Our peoples have suffered enough. And your proposal? We shall withdraw all our soldiers to the time-honored border of our lands. We ask only that you give us some days to collect our furnishings and leave Kausto Castle. In return, 
You pledge to end all hostilities as of this moment. These terms are generous. We have a truce. Truly. Praise be, this is well and quickly done. God go with you and your king, Lady Angharad. I salute you all. You waged a good war. Let us now wage a lasting peace. I stand bewildered, Eivor. In the blink of an eye, years of blood and sweat are put to an end. You have walked a difficult road, Bishop. Chailbout must learn the good news. Will you tell him when you see him? I'll find him now. Alrighty then. Well, now that we have peace with the Britons, that means that Chelbert is now the Elderman of the county of Shropshire. And with Chilbert securing his position as the ruler of this county, we now have an alliance with Shropshire, which is what we came here for in the first place. So, good news all round. Except, where is Chilbert? Ivar, it is done. Peace, eh? And now everyone is shitting themselves with happiness. If not happiness, then relief. Have you seen Chilbert? I want to pass on the good news. He asked me to go hunting earlier. But I am in no such mood. Also remember, the only reason Childert went off hunting alone, in fact the only reason he went hunting in the first place, was because we pissed hey, Ivar hey. off. Have you seen Childert? My brother saw him last. Drunk as a mackerel, isn't he? Celebrating the peace. Got started early. Wake up! Huh? Where is Chailbert? Chail... <coughs> Bert? Did none of you see Chailbert? Only him, Drenger. You will have to wait until he sleeps it off. Does he often get this soaked? By all the gods, he does. Twice a week. Once for three days, another for four. Then twice on Sundays. And when you need him to sober up, what do you do? Keep this to yourself, but once or twice when I needed a quick word, I dumped him in a lake. It's worth a try. Must right, well, we need to know where Chilbert went, so you pick the guy up, you take him to the nearest lake. Really, it's more of a pond than a lake. And you give him a good ducking. A nice nab? That's a low thing to do to a man. Hm. I am looking for Chailbert. The soft Saxon boy? The next elderman, yes. Said he was going hunting to bring back a feast for Ivar and the rest. I know he went hunting. But where? Round the mouth of a cave nearby. Follow this stream up the mountain. South of here. That's enough to go on. Thank you. So, we find the cave. And there are a lot of wolves around here. What happened here? This doesn't look good. Yeah. No, this doesn't look good, does it? There's a lot of blood. Things do not bode well for Chilbert. And bearing in mind that Chilbert's supposed to be the next Elderman of Shropshire, quite aside from the fact that I really like Chilbert, this does not bode well for future peace. Assuming it was the wolves that are responsible for his being missing. Oh, there is something to loot there. Got it. Still no sign of the kid. These wolves didn't kill themselves. If I'm not careful, they're gonna kill me. Ah, who's my kid? The wolves aren't gonna be a danger to me. More blood. Paw prints and blood. Not from a boar. A wolf dragging something through the dirt. Come on, Chilbert, where are you?
Who built this inside a wolf cave? That's what I want to know. Yeah. Uh, it's probably best if we don't ask too many questions like that. Let's just find Chilbert. Oh shit. Chilbert. There he is. Tears of Freya. Chilbert, you live. I... Stay quiet. You're badly hurt. And a wolf didn't do that. A dragon on the hilt. Guards. The Briton crest. Keep breathing, boy. Oh, you haven't got long. I will take you back to say your goodbyes. So, you pick the boy up and you carry him back to Wesbury. Some help here! Eva! Leonard! <laughs> By the hand of Thor! Is that the other name? Eivor, what happened? No! No! You foolish boy, what did you do? I found him deep in a cave beset by wolves. Ivar. Easy, boy. Easy. E Ivar. Get me an axe right fucking now! Ivar. He's gone. An axe! His god will take him as he is. Axe or not. Go to your god, boy. And I will sing for you in Valhalla. This was no wolf. Tell me what happened. Well, the evidence does point to the Britons, but you realize that this does mean war. The Britons did this. I found this blade in his chest. A Briton's dagger. Rodri! But why? You murdered his brother. Did you think he would let that lie so easily? I told you he was a trickster. Peace was never his goal. He takes blood for blood. Bishop Deolov, over here. The walls of his fortress will not protect him. I will sheath this dagger into his lungs. You must move fast then. Attack before Rodri can revel in his trick. No mercy this time, Wolf Kissed. You spared that wet turd, Leofrid. We will not spare Rodri. I swear. Lord above, what's happened? Chaelbert! Murdered. May the Lord who frees you from sin save you and raise you up. Send the boy's body to his father. We will want the Christian burial. Lady Angharad said Rotary is holed up in Kausto Castle. That may have been a lie or a tiny slip. Either way, we should find out. There is a spot near the fortress to set up camp. We will scout it together. A good plan. We go now. Okay. Let's just make sure we've got this sequence of events down straight. Ivar kills Rory's brother right in front of him at peace talks, as a result of which, once we put the pressure on Rory and we force him to fresh peace talks, I made the decision to exclude Ivar from those talks, as a result of which he got pissed off, stomped off to do his own thing, Chilbert went out hunting to kill a boar to make a feast for him in order to cheer him up and feel less bad about the whole thing. Rory, more or less exactly as Ivar promised us he would, sends his wife to keep us all busy with fancy talk of peace, while sending his men, unless he did it personally, which I wouldn't put it past him, and catches Chilbert out on his own, which he wouldn't have been if it hadn't been for that one decision that I made to exclude Ivar from the peace talk. So it seems like there's a whole bunch of things have happened as a direct result of that one decision. But what if I was to go back to an earlier save and make a different decision? How would that affect things? As it happens, I hadn't actually saved the game for several hours, so I had to go back and basically redo almost the entirety of the Shropshire campaign. But I felt that it was worth doing, because I was very curious to see what would happen if I had made a different decision and trusted Ivar at the critical moment. So, several hours of gameplay later, this is what happened the second time around. Ah, a 
strange way to celebrate victory. But then again, our Christ was a fisher of souls, was he not? Bishop, greetings. We've the makings for a delicious soup. I'm grateful, Chaelbert, but my heart is heavy. So many homes burnt. We'll be years rebuilding. You should have seen Chaelbert fight. He will be an elderman with sack and guts, fearsome and raw. I should rather be fair and just, but I take the compliment. I have sent word to the Britons. I pray King Brodry will again be open to peace, in spite of his brother's murder. It worked in our favor. Look where we landed. Britons begging for mercy like whiny pups. Okay, so far, exactly the same as before. This time, however, I'm going to back Ivar up, because pretty much everything that he said was going to happen, did happen. And the other choice led to an utter disaster. I had my doubts about this plan, Ivar. But I believe it may work. This blow we dealt Rodri is a painful one. Right then, Bishop Fancy Pants, what do you think of that? We all stand united behind Ivar this time. Our next steps are critical, my lords. And after what happened in Quatford, it is clear to me that Ivar should lay low. Wait, what? That's word for word exactly what he said the last time, even though I've completely changed my position. Wasn't he even listening to what I just said? Lay low? After all I have done here, you tell me to dunk my head? The good bishop is right, Ivar. You have a warrior's heart, not a peacemaker's. Apparently I'm also not listening to what it was that I just said, because that is exactly what I said the last time when I made the completely opposite decision. What the fuck is going on here? It's almost as if your choices don't actually matter. And I hate that in games. I mean, it really makes my blood boil. I don't have a problem with following a scripted storyline, as long as it's clear that you're following a scripted storyline. This is something that I loved about Assassin's Creed Odyssey, because I had multiple playthroughs of that game from multiple different save points, and the choices that you made in that game really did make a difference to how many of your family um, sided with you and indeed survived up until the end of the game. And it was incredibly difficult to get the best possible ending and therefore incredibly rewarding when you did. But it turns out there's none of that in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. It just gives you an illusion of choice. But the decisions that you make don't actually make any difference. So now that I know that the game is going to do whatever the fuck it wants, regardless of what choices I make, what, what's the point in even taking time to stop and think about the choices, since I know it's not going to make any difference anyway? You see the problem? Yeah. Well, the good news is, Cyberpunk 2077 unlocks tonight, and I plan on playing through it as much as possible tonight in order to get a video out tomorrow. And based on the early reviews that I have read, it couldn't be more different in this respect to Assassin's Creed Valhalla if it tried. Because while it's apparently possible in Cyberpunk to complete the main storyline campaign in only about 20 hours of gameplay, there is at least that much gameplay also available in all of the side quests and missions that you can pick up, and the choices and decisions that you make in those side quests in Cyberpunk wildly affect what type of endings become available to you. But then again, I suppose we really shouldn't expect anything less from CD Projekt Red, and we were really quite foolish to expect any more from Ubisoft. So, on that crushing note of disappointment, that's it for today. I hope you learned something from it. I know I did. And I'll be back tomorrow, assuming everything goes well, with Cyberpunk 2077. In the meantime, as always, take care, stay safe, remember to never trust Ubisoft, and I'll catch you next time.